All right. Macho number seven. We're almost at the halfway point. Crazy. Time is flying. Here is your picture of the week. I actually think this is a good idea. The numbers are not in the same place every time. So if somebody's trying to sol uh, shoulder surf, they won't be able to get it right. I think more places should have this, or at least something similar to it. As a quick reminder, cybersecurity professionals should be well acquainted and knowledgeable in the OSI and the TCP models. Just because we're focused on cybersecurity doesn't mean we forget the basic foundations of IT. We have to use those basic foundations to secure everything else. So if you are not familiar with the OSI or the TCP model, become familiar with it. Protocols that you will see on a typical network that you need to secure are things like the simple network management protocol, who tends to be um, insecure and sends out information through the network that anybody with uh, like Wireshark or network tap can't pick up. The current version is version three. So it is recommended that any devices that are using SNMP use the latest version and also are using any methods to ensure that communication is encrypted. Because you don't want anybody to be able to see this information, like a, a manager's packet requesting certain information and have that relay out through any malicious uh, of an attacking system who's on the network. Make changes to your network that you don't want and give you uh, quite the grief. Domain name system or DNS is one of the most essential protocols that you need to keep up at all times. If it goes down, everybody starts complaining that the internet went down. Not really, just the service went down. It is essential to stay up uh, because it's resolving our what we type into IP addresses and communicating out. So for the sense of critical infrastructure, it needs to be up. This also means because it's critical infrastructure, we need to defend our DNS server vigorously because if it gets poisoned in any way, then it could potentially send victims to the wrong address and cause mayhem, like downloading malware or just annoyances. You really don't want your DNS server to be jeopardized in any way. DNSSEC uh, has been introduced as a defensive layer adding asymmetric cryptography, digital signatures, and extra resources to validate DNS responses. Also, uh, DNS over HTTPS or DOE has been introduced so that a browser does not depend on the local DNS server. It depends on one that is validated that is out on the network and the transmission is completely encrypted. These are two ways to fight against DNS poisoning that is prevalent, especially on systems that are either misconfigured or just not properly set for a network. FTP, another protocol that was built uh, with security not in mind. It can transmit files up and down but it's all in clear text. Your two options to secure are FTP secure or FTPS and secure FTP. It's abbreviation is SFTP. FTPS utilizes the same ports as unencrypted FTP. 
sending control commands with SSL or TLS on port 21 and data unencrypted in port 22. SFTP uses a different port entirely with encryption and compression built in. So depending on your setup, you'll either use FTPS or SFTP. Email is yet another protocol that was built insecurely and had to have other layers on top of it to secure it. Both POP and IMAP carry the same characteristics as above. They are all insecure protocols. They all communicate everything clear text and require some other form of security. For example, uh, Gmail. The only reason why Gmail is encrypted is because you're using HTTPS to get to that information. Otherwise, it's just flying over the network completely insecure. So to secure these, you're going to need a third party tool to inspect and secure the mail or have things like a gateway appliance if you're running email locally. Security devices, both hardware and software exist that you can add on the network to properly defend from attacks. Because there's no point in having a door with a lock in an open space with no walls. This picture is an SSL TLS accelerator. It handles all the SSL and TLS processing that way it's not done by the CPU. Kind of like a TPM chip on the motherboard, this will handle the encryption of any web communication for the, uh, for the OS. That way it offloads it just like a GPU offloads any graphical processing. This device is one of my favorite network taps or test access points. They allow you to see what is happening on the network without adding extra noise on the network. For example, if you're using Wireshark, on the, you connect your laptop to a network and you run Wireshark, you're going to see packets that are coming out from your computer. A device like this, does not allow your system to add packets into the network, thereby making you invisible to the network, but you're still able to listen in on everything that's flowing through the wire that you're connected to. Um, in, the, in Canvas, this picture is there and it's a, a clickable picture. It'll take you to, to Amazon to the tap that I recommend and it's, it's this one. I, I have two of them and I use them uh, whenever I need to do any network analysis and not appear on the network. You can also do things like having sensors, collectors and filters, uh, aggregation switches, correlation engines and DDoS mitigators to help defend your system, your network from attacks that are happening over there, you know, coming from the outside in. Because most often, the attacker will go for the lowest hanging fruit. If you have, for whatever reason, you have SNMP talking to the outside world, then it, you know, it makes easy, easy entrance. Or if you have a DNS server that's facing out to the world to uh, forward any DNS request and it is not secured, an attacker will use that first. So in order to get visibility on the network, you need to be able to process logs. You need to be able to get 
as big and clear a picture of your network to know what's happening where and when. A tool like Splunk is super useful in aggregating all the logs from things like your switches, your routers, your end uh, workstations, your servers, put it all together in one place to search in one place to make alerts to manage all from one spot. Because it'll get hard. It, it gets pretty difficult when you have a lot of machines, a lot of systems, and you need to check the logs everywhere. Much easier to uh, go to one place and do all of that there. Other tools that are at your disposal are things like application whitelisting to say what applications are able to run on systems or able to communicate on the network, uh, controlling what can be mounted onto systems. So maybe uh, we're working with sensitive information or secret, top secret level information. We probably don't want any USB to connect to it to reduce the threat of somebody copying out data. And having advanced malware management to uh, watch over our infrastructure in case, in case uh, something decides to get through because of a click jack or a user got fished or socially engineered to uh, click on something and cause mayhem to us. Like I said, to analyze a lot of these, a lot of this information, because you'll see really fast, it's, it is a lot of information coming from a lot of sources. Tools like Splunk become super easy and super helpful in, uh, in helping you out. Now, although I covered a few protocols, that's just your, you know, some protocols that you'll see, it really depends on, on the infrastructure that you are defending. You may not have SNMP at all in your network because it's not being used. That could be perfectly fine. Uh, but you may have another protocol that the infrastructure uses that is insecure that you need to find a way to secure. Uh, for example, I know that um, there's a company who makes a product. It's a tiny little firewall uh, to prevent, I think it's vending machines from uh, sending or from receiving or sending out any uh, information that's not related to the transaction because those devices aren't built with any security measures. So they built this tiny little like Raspberry Pi sized firewall that you connect in the middle in order to block any, any other traffic from coming in and out. Again, it depends on your situation, how you're gonna go about securing your network. So even though we covered a few topics or a few uh, protocols, it, it's really more of a, a start. And it really depends on what you're working with to defend. 